Welcome to the Garden City High School One School, One Book Checkpoint Podcast. My name is Margot Colemo, and I am the school librarian here at Garden City High School. Today, we met with students and teachers to discuss this year's book, The Inheritance Games, the student and faculty pick for One School, One Book 2024. We had a lively discussion about student voice and choice, the author's background in psychology. We even threw in a little knives out and we had a great conversation about genres and titles moving forward. I hope you enjoy this conversation as much as we did recording. So welcome everybody to the One School, One Book podcast checkpoint. I am Margot Colemo. I am the school librarian at Garden City High School, and I am here today with some stellar teachers and a student to talk about the book, The Inheritance Games, which is our One School, One Book 2024 pick. So let's all go around and introduce ourselves. We'll start with Ms. Durkin. Hi, good morning. I'm Durkin. I teach Latin here at the high school. I'm excited to be part of One School, One Book again. Hi, I'm Mr. O'Hagan. I teach social studies at the high school, and I am equally excited to be part of One School, One Book again this year. Hi, I'm Sophia Amirati. I'm a junior at Garden City High School, and I was very excited to participate in One School, One Book. Thank you all so much for joining us. So before we discuss the book, let's take some time to actually talk about the One School, One Book program at Garden City High School. So if you can believe it, this program is in its seventh year. What do you think are some of the benefits for staff and students that have grown out of this unifying event? I love the fact that we're getting together to do something that's intellectually enriching and academic. And, you know, sometimes reading can be a very solitary but rewarding uh, experience. And this is a great way to share that kind of personal uh, experience you have with a, with a written work and see how other people uh, interpret the same the same material. How What do they see that's different than what you see in the reading? I think that's a great opportunity that we just don't get to do very well. Definitely. I like that you said it was solitary, and I agree with that. I think also there's sometimes a disconnect between perhaps what the adults in the room are reading and the students in the room, and so it, it gives us the opportunity to be on the same page, pun intended. You can um, embrace similar characters, similar perspectives, when ordinarily we might be reading and sharing and engaging in conversations on different topics or different works. Sophia, I'd love to ask you, if you don't mind, um, most schools that run a one school, one book program, they don't give students the choice to vote. They just kind of say, here's the book, and maybe it's decided upon by the librarian and the principal. Um, what do you think about the voting process here at the high school for student voice and choice? Well, I think it's a great process because it gives students the opportunity to give their opinion and that can cause more students to want to read and participate if it's something within their interest. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, we're very unique here at the high school that we do it that way. So I like that tradition, even though it's difficult from my vantage point as the librarian and as the committee members know to come up with different titles. I think that voting component is so um, important. Well worth it. And one thing that I did differently last year, um, I polled students in June asking them what titles they wanted to read. And do you think we should continue moving forward with that? Because that's how we settled upon this title, actually. Uh, it was not a choice that I would have come up with, but so many students, especially the freshmen and the sophomores, were like, oh, this was such a great book. We have to do this as a contender. So again, from a student perspective, do you think that's something that I should do? Kind of ask the students for their input? I definitely think it's a good idea because... It, like I said before, it like gives students the opportunity, but also sometimes there's more things that become popular and like trend, like it becomes trendy and a ton of the students love like reading the books and then they discover like these series and that opens like more opportunities for reading. That's awesome. I love that perspective. So thank you for sharing that. Does anyone have any titles or I shouldn't even say titles. I think it's too early to tell, but maybe some genres they want to throw out at me for next year. I'm always thinking ahead. Well, I'm always a sucker for historical fiction. We've had a lot of <laughs> success with our last couple, whether it was Allies or or Fever, which I was a big fan of. It was so appropriate after COVID to read that. Um, so I'll always throw the historical fiction uh, perspective out there. I agree with that um, for, I think, obvious reasons. <laughs> but, um, I, to touch upon something that you said before about asking students whether or not those books themselves are the ones that come up uh, in polling. I think even getting authorial recommendations. So right last year, it was the same author as Saul 
of the sea. Yes. Um, and I think that's a great way to get people in touch with the works of someone that they might not ordinarily read. So maybe they've read something by this author. It'll inspire them to read something new by this author. And I think from a teaching perspective, again, it keeps me in touch with what students are reading on the outside. So if I have a, uh, an interest in picking up something new, I might want to do something that I know I can connect with my students and what they're enjoying. So I think polling them is a really great way. Uh, I like this book because it's different. Even though I really enjoy historical fiction, mm -hmm. the fact that this book is not that, I think is also good because it shows the program evolves. I agree. I, I don't think I would have picked this one up had it not been, you know, uh, as part of our, you know, it selected as the book. I don't, I don't think I would have gone for this one, but I'm glad I did. Me too. I think it's great that everyone's branching out a little and who knows, maybe we'll go back to historical fiction next year. So let's turn our attention to the book and no spoilers. It's okay if you haven't finished. This is just a checkpoint. Let's kind of go around around Robin and say, how are you enjoying the book so far? So McGee, what are you thinking? So I'm about 100 pages in uh, and I like it. I was commenting to Mr. Hagen the other day that I felt at first that it was a jumble of characters and there's so much information thrown at you once. And sometimes that can be difficult, but I like the way so far that all of that information is now being played. It's playing out. So at first I had trouble keeping track of who was a brother, who was a, another attendee and so on. And now those people are getting personalities and uh, engaging in more, uh, more intensely with the plot. So I feel like it was a lot the first couple pages or chapter or so, but it has played out very nicely so far. So I'm enjoying it. What are your thoughts, Mr. O'Hegan? I'm in agreement. And I actually, the first couple, of, I, I did finish, but I read the first couple of chapters and I was actually annoyed because I just was so confused <laughs> trying to keep track of anybody. But then there was that part of me that said, not a, what a great tool that is because in a lot of ways you can associate then with Avery, the main character, because she's been thrown into this. She doesn't know who these people are. So as much as it bothered me at first, I almost did that double take thinking to myself, well, this author does have her background in psychology. Like maybe she was really setting this up, you know, I don't know if I'm giving her too much credit, but I thought it was, you know, kind of a good setup for putting you in the shoes of this young woman who's kind of thrown into this situation. And I felt the same way. I, I had no idea who everybody was, what their agendas were, and, you know, just the, the underlying um, non question of why is she there? What, how does she become this, you know, central focus of, of the story? So I, I, I think I, I did enjoy that part of it. I enjoyed the, after I realized that I was angry for a reason, <laughs> I enjoyed it. And what do you think, Sophia? Well, I completely agree with all of that because I have read many books and at first the pull like to the book wasn't as strong, but then I realized like that the author wants you to feel how Avery's feeling. And then it like really helped me. And then reading like the entire book, there was like great twists, great pulls, and you just never wanted to put it down. And it was very fast paced and entertaining. And it reminded me a lot of like Knives Out. And so it also like yeah. I pulled like connections to it and it just helped bring it like all together and it finished it very fast because it was honestly a great book. I think it's that, well, you said uh, drew, drew a comparison to Knives Out, that there's that psychological component to it which I don't think a lot of people realize that the author does have that background in um, psychology. So I could definitely see that. And I think she did initially set it up that way because now we feel what Avery was feeling coming into this situation with all of these new people and feeling kind of that overwhelmingness of who's this person again? What's the family connection? You know, you need like that family tree almost. And then you have these extraneous people as well. So that kind of leads me into, does is there a favorite character right now, or is it kind of still up in the air for you? I haven't finished, so maybe I'll start first. Uh, sure. For me, it's Jameson, um, because he is the most elusive and intriguing, clearly intentionally, uh, both to Avery, to the reader. I feel like he's smarter um, than, well, the author alludes to the fact that he's quite intelligent. He plays on words a lot, and he's clearly tricky in a way I don't think is mischievous, but is very intelligent. So I'm very curious to know more about him. I find him the most intriguing. And to that point, there is a spinoff book. Um, what is it? The fourth one, would we say? The Brothers Hawthorne that's, um, that's coming out, which just kind of focuses on the brothers. So once you read, because this is part of a trilogy, 
So if you like the Inheritance games, there are two more that you can read, and then you can go on to the Brothers Hawthorne and kind of, I guess, dig deeper into their background. Um, like we've discussed earlier, this book is a departure from some of the titles that we've read in the past. Um, it's a contemporary mystery, but it's also rooted in popular culture. So do you think that's why it makes it popular with students? Because I had students coming down to the library. The book was flying off the shelves. I mean, it, it typically does in, in previous years, but this year in particular, students were very excited to read it. And do you think it's because it's rooted in that contemporary kind of pop culture feeling? Again, Sophia, I'd love to get your thoughts as a student. Well, I feel like it definitely hit with all like the students, just because I feel like like we said, it hasn't been more of like a contemporary mystery book and it's a change, but also just like the story behind it. Like when students started reading it, they were telling their friends, oh, you have to read this. This is like a great book, has a great hook. I just think it's definitely more popular with the students because just in a student's opinion, we don't really read like historical fiction or like not or like history. It's just like, brings a bigger pull and I just think in the future it's definitely going to be more of a like popular like genre that you're going to get like when you ask for feedback for books to like put on the polls in the future and we want to meet and we I really am about voice and choice we want to meet the students where they are and so that kind of leads into the next question we've already discussed the author's psychological background but um, I just read that it's now being optioned as a TV series on Amazon. So given what we know about when books are made into either movies or series, I mean, we saw The Summer I Turned Pretty as an Amazon series. We saw To All the Boys I Loved Before as a Netflix series. So now, I guess our predictions, do we think that the TV series will remain true to the book? I think there's tons of materials for them to mine. Um, I I don't know that any they ever really stay absolutely true to the book. You know, oftentimes there are plot lines that they just drop out. You know, so as not to confuse the reader. I mean, even like Harry Potter purists will complain that the films don't do everything in the books, right? I mean, eight films you couldn't get it all in, but but you couldn't. So <laughs> I guess I guess that's going to be the case here too. Um, I think they have compelling figures, and certainly, you know, with four brothers, I don't know if you can do that much shared screen time with all four brothers, that would be really a, a challenge for a director and a, and a writer to put together a series where all of these brothers were equally represented. Um, so I'm, I'm hesitant to say that they can really present every facet of, of the story, but I think it'll probably be a smash hit when they put it out there with everybody who's inclined to read it. I, just another comment on what you said before, I wasn't even thinking about Knives Out. But you're right about that. It has that same kind of feel that, you know, where you're you're kind of looking over your shoulder. You're not sure what any of these characters are really about, and everybody's suspicious. And um, I, I think that's a that's a good parallel to draw. I haven't thought of that one before. So. Thank you definitely for those insights. I really appreciate it. So our time is winding down together today, and I just would love to hear any additional thoughts, comments that you have about. One School, One Book here at the high school, The Inheritance Games, anything moving forward. Would you like to add anything before we sign off for the day? Well, I just want to say that I think you do a really nice job of advertising it, of finding ways to get students engaged, teachers engaged, um, because it's easy to find something else to do, but you keep people coming back to the program, and I think that's a testament to your hard work. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. It's fun to it's fun to do this. I've done a lot of research about One School, One Book, and um, it's nice to feel like we're part of a community. And I think even moving forward after COVID, it, it felt important to keep going with it, even though maybe it faltered a little and we couldn't all be together in person. Um, but and now I see the importance of coming together. And I just love how every year there is more student input, more student voice and choice, and more faculty buy-in, which is huge. I'll agree, and I'll echo those sentiments. You do a wonderful job setting everything up for us, and I think it's just a it's a great opportunity to have that kind of intellectual dialogue and and academic exa, and nobody's getting tested on it, right? Like so much of what we do is assessed, and the real assessment is here: is how much did you enjoy it? How much did you you know gain from the conversations you had with other people? And and I think there is an excite excitement with reading a book that you know other people are reading and you can kind of share your insights about the characters. Um, you know, some of my happiest days working here are the ones where I'm sitting in the social studies office, just geeking out with the social studies department and 
know, this is kind of a, a broader way to do that, you know, to share that that experience, which as I said before, sometimes can be solitary if you don't have other people to talk to about that reading. And I think it just it's just going to encourage students and teachers to want to read more. So nothing wrong with that. Definitely not. Thank you. I appreciate everybody's time today. And I will see you on February 15th at our reading celebration. See you there. Sounds great. Bye-bye.